Over the last few months, I've seen a number of posts on various sites about what tools um, a typical model shop um, builder should have. And so I thought I'd take you through some of the acquisitions I've made over the last 10 years, which might give you an insight and help you with the decision making as to what you should purchase. I have two shops, one inside which I try to keep as clean as possible and one outside which I refer to as my dirty shop. Um, typical of a, a modeler, there's not a lot of room and there's a conf constant conflict between you and your wife for the ever-expanding number of tools and spaces that you need for this hobby. Some of the main tools in the outside shop is of course my Dewalt chop saw. Um, which I find replaces a radial arm saw and is much neater. A few years ago I was really lucky to be able to purchase this dual full-size table saw and it's provided with human service. It's um, a bit of a challenge to work inside this very tight space but um, it's on a, a platform with some wheels and so I can take it out and put it in the yard. It's a Dremel um, belt and this sander is probably close to the end of his life. I'll probably re replace it in a year or two. But again, provided me with human service for the building of many of my models. This compressor is, uh, I use it to clean the, the shop floor and uh, to power most of the air tools that I have. Not that I have a lot of air tools, but again, another invaluable tool um, in, in the outside shortage of, um, of tools. I bought these tool dock accessories. Um, I have seven of them in total. Um, wonderful tool docks. A little bit subject to rust, but um, fantastic. Of, um, storage underneath and each one comes with these two drawers. and a fairly sturdy lock. This particular tool dock um, is on wheels, so I can move it around. Um, it has a bench vise on it, um, which again I can move from table to table. This tool dock unit is a main storage um, unit for most of my woodworking tools. At one time it was in the outside shop, today it's in the inside shop. Uh, this is a Cameron drill press that I bought from Charlie Files a number of years ago. Um, it's a jeweler's drill press and I I think it's, of all the drill presses I have, it's the most used, really fantastic tool, uses very small drills and bits. It has an XY sliding table and um, there's a gauge at the top that allows you to um, drill to really the finest tolerance. And I have two bigger drill presses. Um, one is inside and one is outside. Um, the chuck that I have here is transferable both inside and outside. The, this particular drill press uh, was given to me by a friend um, because he it had no chuck on it and I was able to use the chuck from my outside drill press and I use it interchangeably. This is a small um, Proxon XY um, vise that I, I purchased. Um, very useful, uh, not an essential tool. You need at least one of them in your shop and I can transfer this one in and out whenever I have This it. is the outside drill press which I plan to replace with a stand-up drill press um, table um, simply so that I have a, a greater opportunity to use the throat between the drill and where the XY table will sit on the, on the plate. A useful tool, particularly when you're going to make mouldings, is this Proxon Shaper. Um, very versatile, fantastic tool and very easy to use. We have the small Proxon bandsaw which moves in and out depending on the work that I'm doing at the time. This year we added the Universal Work Table um, and I have a whole video on Vimeo on that that you can see it but it's really earned its way in the shop this year. This is the latest addition to the shop. It's a Proxon surface planer and really made my life 
so easy when I was making up the frames. I just can't figure out how I ever uh, operated my shop without it. Once you're going to need to dimension uh, lumber, you need a thickness plater. And this Proxon DH40 is the smallest that I've come across. Like all Toxon, Proxon tools, it is excellent. Perhaps the only limitation is the three inch feeder that limits you to that with the boards. A number of small chop saws over the years, but there's no question that this is the, the Cadillac of all the, of the chop saws. It's made by Proxon, um, and it has all the various adjustments that you could possibly ever want. One of the early tools that I bought was this Dremel uh, scroll saw, which really um, starting to show his age a little bit, but still the workhorse of my model shop has a tilting table down to 45 degrees, uh, which is really very useful when you're starting to make frames or cut out uh, parts off of plans um, as you would in a scratch built project. If you're doing scratch building, um, you certainly need a spiral sander. Um, which can make it work very, very easy. This is one from Delta that I've had for a few years and it really hasn't given any trouble at all. This is Sherline Long Bed um, Lathe, which um, of the two is of the two Sherline products, it's the one I use most. There's both a short bed and a long bed. I chose the long bed uh, because I thought I would need the distance for doing various spas. Um, but the truth is, a short bed will work just just as well. There's the Sherline milling machine. Um, this particular machine is on its way to becoming a fully CNC machine. Um, every few months I buy a motor and soon to buy the controllers and then the software program. Over the years I have purchased three table saws. Um, this is the Proxon uh, table saw. Um, perhaps the greatest feature of this is the ability to angle the blade to allow you to cut up to 45 degree cuts. If you've been in the model long enough, you certainly own one of these pre miniature table saws that was sold, developed and sold by Charlie Files. Um, absolutely tremendous tool. Most of my early models were built with it and with all the accessories that Charlie developed over the time, an indispensable part of any hobby making shop. And that takes us to the Jim Barnes table saw that is without question the uh, deluxe model of all table saws. And if you, were, if you could only buy one saw, I would highly recommend it be the Jim Barnes. It has all sorts of unique features. Um, these micro adjustments um, the sliding fence, um, truly the Cadillac of mon miniature table saws. Our um, model shop is complete without a method of sharpening um, your chisels and bits for your lathe um, and milling machine. And this is a good old workhorse. Uh, a gravely that I bought many years ago that's still doing human service. And uh, no model shop is without variable speed motor tools, normally made by Dremel. This is one with a flexible shaft, and at the end of it, it has a universal chuck that is very, very useful um, for changing bits very quickly. Um, that particular unit has a foot variable speed um, switch, which is essential to allow um, use of both hands while doing work. And then of course there are the standard Dremels. I have two of them. I think I've burned out one or two over the years. So you can never have enough fittings and I'm always in the shop, always picking up new stuff um, just in case I have an application and don't have the right tool to do it. A few years ago I was smart enough to purchase this Toba Carver which uses an uh, air compressor and absolutely fantastic tool for doing fine carving work and getting detail um, that you would struggle to get 
uh, with chisels, um, it just simply makes the, the work so much easier. We're getting wood down to very fine tolerances. This uh, thickness sander is an essential tool for any model shop. Uh, I purchased this at least 10 years ago from Charlie Files and it has certainly um, earned, earned its place in my shop. No shop is without a cordless power drill and this Milwaukee has really served itself well over the last two or three years that I've had it. Most of you, if you've looked at any of my videos, have seen these small hand tools. This is the Micromark family. Um, it doesn't seem that they make all of them still. Um, perhaps the only one I had disappointment was with the belt sander. Um, and uh, the little grinder here, um, without question, is the most used tool in this. And I do use this drill quite a bit. And then on the side of Proxon, um, this pen sander is used quite a bit, the miniature jigsaw. And uh, for heavier work, I use this um, hand sander. To keep the outside shop clean, we have this 16 gallon rigid shop vac, which is close to the end of its life. Um, when I change this, I do plan to put a vacuum system in um, that I can attach to all the machines and run it around the walls of the shop. On the inside shop, I have a smaller 10 gallon um, va shop vac, um, which is connected to a um, Veritas vacuum system. I have seven gates on it. The gates are all attached to the various machines and this allows this room to keep as clean as possible while carrying out really dusty work. And so that about covers all of the power tools that um, I have in the two shops. Um, just to clarify a point, for those coming into the hobby for the first time, please don't get intimidated that you need a shop with all these power tools. Just remember that the first modelers who built those fantastic admiralty models that you see in the museums around the world did so without a single power tool. So keep modeling, collect your tools over time, and we're going to do a second video on the hand tools that I have in my shop. This is Kevin Kenny from Trinidad Tobago saying keep modeling.